Okay, this is the Slinky demo. Uh, we're going to go through a number of things here. Let's start with the basics. First of all, we are showing different kinds of waves, and the two kinds of waves are transverse waves and longitudinal waves. A transverse wave, you want to think it starts with a T, so it goes down. If it's a T, you have the motion or the energy goes that direction, but the, uh, the vibrations are perpendicular to that direction of motion. Just like when you traverse or you go across a canyon or you traverse a bridge. The other one, the longitudinal wave, is also known as a compression wave. Okay, so compression wave goes parallel to the motion, transverse wave goes perpendicular to the motion. Now other things that we can do, let's talk about the speed of the wave. <clears throat> Just in, as in other kinds of harmonic motion, the amplitude does not affect the speed. I'm going to do a small pulse and a big pulse. Small pulse, big pulse. Now, let me do them on top of one behind the other, and we'll see if they catch up with each other. Notice even when they reflect, they stay away from each other. We'll do it one more time. So you'll notice, if you look carefully, that the, the large wave did not catch the smaller wave. I think most people would think that a bigger amplitude, the larger wave, would move faster, but it never catches it. The only thing that a large amplitude does is it has more energy, so it'll go farther before it dampens or dies out. Well, this is no different than a loud sound being heard from farther away than a, than a, uh, a weak sound. It has more amplitude, so it can go farther before it dampens. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about constructive and destructive interference. We have someone at the other side that's gonna help me out here. Both of us are gonna go this direction, and we have these squares here that help us out. We're going to go to that spot, oh, before I do that, sorry, speed of the wave. I can actually make it faster by pulling in the coils. That makes it tighter, and watch how much faster the wave is. You should be able to see that that's significantly faster. And notice it goes farther, too. It goes back and forth more often, or more, more times. And the reason for that simply is that there are less coils touching the ground, so there's less friction. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, another thing I didn't show, I apologize, this is not perfectly scripted. <clears throat> I'm going to have you go ahead and do a transverse wave, <clears throat> and I'm going to do a longitudinal wave at the same time. Ready, go. Make yours a good snap. Ready, go. Now, uh, the kids are usually pretty surprised by that. We get a lot of ooh, ah, but two people can talk in a crowded room at the same time, and all of those waves go through the same air. Okay? Now, we're going to do, I'm going to do a snap. That goes one square, you do a snap, one square, there we go. Watch in the middle when they cross. One, two, three. And you will notice, let's do it again, one, two, three. And you will notice that the combined wave, these are vector, these are scalars, they just add together, and we got two squares instead of one square. But what if I go the opposite direction? I'm going to do this, and he's going to do, all right, watch what happens in the very center. Let's wait till it happens. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, we'll do it again. It's a little hard to see, but you should see right there in the center that instead of it making a big wave one over the other, it actually just rotates or pivots. One, two, three. Because that would be destructive interference. If we want to call this a negative amplitude and a positive amplitude equaling zero. The last thing I want to show you here with the slinky is, first of all, his hand is fixed so watch what happens, we can show his hand down there so we see that it's fixed. All right, and watch down on that end what happens to the wave as it passes. It inverts, it goes to the opposite side of the slinky. Now, he's going to use a string instead. Okay, put the slinky the string down, pull down a little farther away. All right, now watch what happens this is known as an unfixed boundary. The other was a fixed boundary. Okay, you may pull your hand up just a little bit off the ground. There you go. Notice the pulse stays on the same side of the slinky. So if there's a fixed boundary, fixed, hold, fixed boundary, hold on to it. There we go, fixed boundary, inversion, unfixed boundary, No inversion, and in my class, just for fun, we call that inverting and verting. I know it's not a word, but it works out. All right, uh, there's the Slinky Lab.